Hi, my name is uh, Chloe. I'm from Canada. I'm a student here in Mumbai. And my question is uh, why women are not accepted into mosque in India? Sisters asked a very good question that why are women not accepted in the mosque in India? So India is to blame, not the Quran and Hadith. I told in my lecture, do not judge Islam by looking at what the Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. Judge Islam according to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said to the Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet said, do not prevent the female servants of Allah from going to the mosque. Another hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one in the book of Salah, just a few hadith before that. He said that if the female servants, that means the Muslim women, servants of Allah, if they want to go to the mosque at night, do not prevent them. Now, it is the Indian culture. Now, when we allow a woman to go in the mosque, we see to it that she gets equal but separate facilities, separate entrance, separate place of ablution, wudu, separate place of prayer. We don't believe in intermingling, like when you go to the church or when you go to the temple. Why? Because in our Salah sister, when we pray, we believe in equality of human beings. We stand shoulder to shoulder. Irrespective of whether the man next to me is black or white, yellow or brown, king or pauper, I stand close to him shoulder to shoulder. Now, if a lady is there, close to me shoulder to shoulder, the medical doctors tell me the temperature of the lady is one degree higher, if I pray standing with her shoulder to shoulder, I will concentrate more on her than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, separate but equal facility. Separate entrance, separate place of wudu. You have to wash yourself, wash your legs. You can't do in front of the Namaram. So in India, most of the mosques don't have. But Alhamdulillah, it has started. I know of several mosques in Bombay where they have facilities for ladies. We have several mosques in South India where I've been to there. But I do agree with you, it is very less in percentage. If you go to Saudi Arabia, almost all the mosques, more than 95% of the mosques, they have facility for women, more than 95. Whether it's 99, 99.9, I don't know. More than 95% of the mosques have separate facility for ladies. You go to London, you go to USA, most of the foreign, it is India. So the problem is with the Indian Muslims. Therefore, in my talk, I say that see to it, there should be a separate facility for the women. Separate, but equal facility, so that they too can pray to Almighty God in the mosque. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you. You're most welcome. Yes, brother. Good evening, sir. My name is Ashish, and my question is, there is concept in Islam by paying money to the victim's family. By paying money to victim's family, from accused family and getting released from the crime. What is the concept behind that? And is it not injustice with the victim's family? I'll better ask the question that what is the concept of dia money, means paying blood money in Islam, that if someone has murdered someone or killed someone, whatever reason, the family members of the person who's murdered can excuse, can excuse by taking dia money. This concept is that if someone is driving a car or maybe by mistake while walking something happens or by accident someone dies here if it is out of negligence yet for example a doctor is doing surgery and it is proven out of negligence the patient has died islamic law death penalty but there the relatives of the person who has died. Fine, we agree the Niyah was good. He didn't actually kill my son. I forgive him. But negligence, if it is done while trying to save a life, he goes scot-free. But if negligence he does something and the person dies, then death penalty because of his fault. In this case, if it's proven it is 100% negligence, then the family members may say, even if it's negligence, I forgive him. Okay. I forgive him like free. I forgive him by taking one rupee or by the one million rupees. Maybe that one million rupee may be a penalty. Okay, don't do it again. Now you have done it. I don't want to take your life. I forgive you. One million rupees is a penalty. So this concept in Islam that the person who has died, his family members can forgive by asking a penalty. 
if it is a conspiracy and a murder, 100% proven, then it is death penalty. These cases are mainly when we know that the person has a chance to be forgiven. If someone goes and does a bomb blast on the street and kills 100 people, innocent people, no forgiving, death penalty direct. You understand? Now, for example, while if you're doing something, maybe a building is being constructed, fine, and there's negligence, the worker gets electrocuted. It's the fault of the builder. Now the family members say, okay, I don't mind forgiving. You know, my husband used to give me every day 2,000 rupees. Now, if I demand 500,000 rupees, even in full life, how much could he give me? 25,000 a year? Five lakh would take how many years? How many, 20 years? So now if I take that five lakh rupees, I can invest it some way and get 4,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees a month, correct? So fine, I forgive him. And with this money, at least I can survive. The various aspects and angles. This is not the only aspect. I'm giving you examples. So in this way, what happens? At least in Indian law, finish death penalty. But oh, bichare ka bread and to mar gaya na. Usko fayda kya hua? Does the government take care of him? The earning member has died. The wife and children are on the street. Does the government help? No. So here, at least as a compensation, now they invest the money. Every month they get five thousand rupees. So at least some part of their life is taken care of. It may not compensate completely. And sometimes the person may just forgive without taking money also. So therefore, the various situation Islam has permitted so that it's beneficial for both. Hope that answers the question.